Mark's really been so supportive of me and I know there's just such a stereotype that the man goes to work and the woman stays home and raises the children. But in our family, he has really given me the space to be able to do both things and I can have that balance. And for the first two years, Mark was on the road with me traveling. I think I did eight films in two years after my first son was born. And I, w I was a breastfeeding mother and I needed the baby to be with me at all times. And Mark came along and he was there every day with me, looking after the kids. Oh, please. <laughs> <coughs> well, that's um, what you do. Yeah, and it's, it's been lovely to, to offer that support back now. And um, it's, it's nice. He's a, he's a strong, beautiful man, and he's not afraid to let me do my thing. That's right. <laughs> and Mark, it's been a, a common thing where it's come up a few times tonight, raising boys. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to be a challenge. Things are changing. How do we stop young men and young boys carrying guilt that they're not necessarily responsible for or feeling that they've, they're somehow lesser than? You don't want your children, you don't want your little boys to feel guilty or ashamed. But you also want them to be aware of certain things in the world. In thinking about it, I realize how it's hard because language kind of keeps us a little bit in shackles about how we define um, masculinity. Even just that word, there's an association with that being stronger than feminine, right? And, uh, you know, testosterone and estrogen. And I think little boys are full of testosterone. And I think what's beautiful that's happening in the world right now is there's just a lot of awareness. There's a lot of conversation about um, this patriarchal kind of society that we've been functioning in for so long. And um, I, I think that we are raising our boys to kind of question everything and to be kind and loving and compassionate and, and vulnerable. Um, that's what I love most about all the men that I admire in my life um, are the ones who are willing to be vulnerable. Our son Bodhi, he loves to have his hair long and he's a little surfy dude. He has an amber necklace that he wears that he really loves. And uh, some of the kids in the class were calling him a girl because he had long hair and a necklace. And he, he came home and he was so confused as to why that was an insult. Um, <laughs> he just didn't understand why they were using it as a diss. Um, and he was like, what does that mean? And I, I found it so beautifully refreshing that, that he didn't see that as a bad thing. My stepson, Izzy, he's 10 and he's just a radical thinker. He goes to school and he wears his Black Lives Matter t-shirt and he talks about <laughs> white privilege and how he's a white privileged male. And just, he's, he's, 10. he's 10 years old. <laughs> um, and the things he talks about, um, even watching a football game and like the cheerleaders come on and he was like, <laughs> he just, he isn't sure if he should sign up for that. He's like, are they happy doing that though? Or are they right. doing that for the men? <laughs> he's like, if it's their choice, it's okay. Right. <laughs> he's just a beautiful little boy and it's, crazy that our children are thinking about these things but I think it's the way of the future and it's how we're going to affect positive change in the world is by raising these these new thinkers I think it's really special